Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramford. I'm here to usher you in through the weekend. It is Halloween weekend, so there are going to be plenty of things happening this weekend as well as next Wednesday, which is the official Halloween day. Um, Today is the mm, 26th. I had to double-check my clock for some reason. I'm always off. Mornings are weird. That's just what happens. Let's talk about weather. Uh, (laughs) Currently, the weather is 45 degrees outside. Um, Rain. Of course, you know, if you stick your head out the uh, window today or looked out the window or get a chance, you should look out the window right now. It's raining. Um, You're going to have that rain happen pretty much all day today and tonight. Going into Saturday, with it's maybe it's starting to light up a little bit more on Sunday with patchy uh, areas of clearness. Um, I don't know why I said patchy. Um, So then it's going to be mostly clear on Saturday night. If you guys are planning on going out tonight, you may want to wear something a little... Uh, less Halloween-y, weeny, and a little more uh, um, coat checky. So um, those aren't words. So there's some of the uh, weather that's happening this weekend as well. It's going to be a lot of rain this weekend, and we're ho- we did a live stream last night uh, between Hellgate and the Glacier Wolfpack uh, football game. And tonight we're going to have another game between Sentinel. So I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later in the show. But let's kick off some things with the news. Uh, Missoula County is sending uh, Matt Rosendale to campaign a letter seeking reimbursement for the. Uh, uh, $13,000 in cost during the presidential uh, Donald Trump's visit in the October 18th rally. The amount includes $1,100 occurred in overnight and other costs of the Missoula County Sheriff's Office, the $2,000 from the Office of Emergency Management. The Missoula County Airport Authority has additional costs for cleanups of after the rally as well. The commission um, also uh, wondered aloud, uh, um, wondered, uh, wondered, out loud, uh, whether the uh, Rosendale would have to declare the cost as an in-kind contribution. Uh, the Federal Election Commission has determined that goods or services offered free or less than the usual charge result as in-kind contributions. So keep that phrase in mind. In-kind contributions are happening um, as well. So I have a sheet of paper, and on that sheet of paper is a news release. And on that news release is Halloween safety. So, of course, um, Halloween is a fun festival time of the year. And this is from the uh, Fire Rescue of Missoula Rural Fire Department as well. Um, their number is 549-6172. I'll give that number once again when I'm done reading um, uh, kind of a brief of this statement. Is that make sure your child can see. Many masks cover uh, many of the blind spots in, w- in ways people can children can see. Use the buddy system when trick-or-treating. A lot of times uh, kids uh, wear darker costumes, so make sure that they can be seen. Remind children to wait until they get home to eat their treats because there have been some instances where some people have um, put things in uh, kids' candy, so a lot of times you now you have to, now you have to check the candy. Um, seen be seen. Um, use sidewalks, so if you need to cross the street, make sure you look both ways and make sure their uh, vision is not obstructed. An average of 860 reports of home structure fires per year from 2019 to 2013, um, and there's always an average of one civilian death, 41 civilian injuries, and $3.4 million in direct property damage. Costumes, when wearing costume, choose uh, stay away from billowing or long trailing fabric. If you are making your own costume, choose materials that won't easily ignite. Many um, costumes apparently are flammable. Uh, flammable decorations, um, dried flowers, corn, st- uh, corn stalks, and uh, crepe paper are highly flammable. So you want to be aware of that. Some of the decorations are very flammable as well. So... And also, if I can t- actually turn the page, um, you have candle jack-o'-lanterns. Of course, you know, it's, a, it's fun, so uh, it's a safest, uh, it, it is safest to use glow sticks or battery-offered candles in a jack-o'-lantern. Um, exits, remember to keep exits clear of decorations so nothing blocks exit routes. So if you want to decorate and you want to have a scarecrow hanging on your door, you have to make sure it's not blocking and it's really swing. So anyways, uh, for more information, you go to uh, their website on uh, fire Halloween safety and fire safety is nfpa.org or aap.org for more information. Then again, you can always call them at 549-6172 for more information. And that was a press release. They send this out pretty much every year just to kind of give an update. It looks like they've been sending out the same press release since 2013. Um, 
State news, the Ashland Hunter Check Station in South Eastern Montana saw 333 hunters last weekend. Um, more chasing big game, and 40% had s some success. So that's pretty good, 50-50 chance, 40-60 uh, chance. Um, many folks who have hunting spots in Not Telling Creek uh, and, and none of your uh, business, public lands, are looking pretty good this season. Many big game animals are being hunted well into November, November 25th when the season closes. Uh, 43 antelope, 33 bucks, 10 antelopes. Um, they saw f uh, 45 mule deers, uh, 29 bucks, 16 antelopes, and five white-tailed deer, five bucks, and three antelopes. No elk passed through the station. Station this this station up in Ashland Creek Station. So that's kind of what's happening in state hunting news. Um, of course, in uh, the national news, um, the investigation into a series of homemade pipe bombs um, addressed to political enemies of President Trump expanding Thursday with the discovery of more suspicious packages in New York and Delaware, bringing the total of Ta uh, total tally found nationwide to 10. Um, one of these 10 was actor Robert De Niro's and former uh, Vice President Joe Biden. The most re recent package was Robert De Niro at the business and residence. Um, De Niro has been outspoken critic of Trump, including an explicit lace speech th at this year's Tony Awards. Many of these uh, pipe bomb packages were aimed at Democratic bigwigs from Barack Obama to Hillary Clinton. Investigators are now working in New York and other cities within postal systems and the federal and at the federal level to determine who sent these packages and why. Um, but the FBI has shown uh, has acknowledged that more suspicious, suspicious packages may still be working their way through the mail, and there is no way to know how many will they be ultimately so that's what's happening in the news just uh kind of letting you guys know uh some of the things that are happening there's a bunch of other things happening there's always something happening and you can find out more by going to Mazillion. you can go to npr you can go to helena independent report you can go to billings gazette and all those wonderful newspapers out of the great falls tribune and um more, but of course, here's some information straight from Missoula, um, where um, MCAT got a chance to go to the Smurfit Stone site, and I have a little art clip at the end for you guys, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk about all the city council stuff, where they're going to be moving some power lines, and the city's going to be working in conjunction with Northwest Energy, so stay with me. The uh, maintenance shop and the main office here on your left, and then off to, the le off to your right is the paper machine buildings that are left. Uh, there were three, three paper machines, and uh, those buildings are still intact. Could this be turned into a um, sewage treatment plant? So Larry's going to explain um, the, the hows and the whys of that. Well, it's not likely to happen. Um, you've got to remember that this, this piece of equipment has been sitting here since 2011, and it's rusting, and... Uh, you just don't go in and uh, turn the switch and start it, start things up. So it would take a major renovation to ever convert this back into a working clarifier. The tea-colored water was closer to the river by that old tree there down that way. And that's where you saw the tea-colored water. But was, what was amazing to me is how far the river water had come up through here and covered all of this grass and vegetation.
Hey guys, welcome back. So the city of Missoula, as a Parks and Conservation Committee, uh, hosted uh, Northwest Energy of Representatives to talk about uh, some of the issues that they've had in the past with flooding and power lines uh, adjacent to the floodplain near Orchard Homes, uh, Tower Street, and all those areas. So they want to have a more comprehensive um, change, which involves an easement swap. Whew. So they're going to swap between the two places. I don't know why I did that sound effect. Anyways, uh, let's talk about some city stuff. Um, so most of the stuff, um, it's a, a hundred and um, sixty-one uh, kilo uh, vo k volts overhead utility line. But of course, within the past ten years, this line has suffered significant damage from multiple floods and tree-related issues. This has involved annual entries into the park with heavy and light equipment to maintain the power lines and poles. Twice in the past ten years, following severe floods, major reconstruction of portion of the line were required involving extended periods. So, Northwest Energy and the City of Missoula are doing an easement swap to f help figure this out. Here is Elizabeth Erickson with Parks and Direction, with Parks and Recreation, with some of the solutions with a map. So, when the city acquired the open space lands that are now called Tower Street Conservation Area, it was through two acquisitions in 2001 and 2004 using open space bond funds, and then the city later acquired lands across the river in 2014. And um, when we purchased the Tower Street Conservation Area lands, they came with a transmission line corridor with the poles and the lines in the existing easement that you can see here in green. This is the existing or old easement corridor, as we've been calling it. And in recent years, and in particular this past spring with the heavy flooding that we saw in the Clark Fork River, um, these poles or some of these poles were damaged. The channel has shifted quite considerably over the years. Um, basically, this whole area was flooded, and Joe's going to show you some footage that really demonstrates that. And these poles, one of them fell into the river, they've been damaged, and they're just not in a very sustainable location. And so Northwestern Energy had to turn off the power. Um, and they came to myself and to Morgan. They contacted us um, this late spring, early summer with a proposal to relocate these lines. And... Um, and as you can see, um, I'm sorry, I, I'm interrupting um, Aaron Erickson, but right around here, the red line is where they're going to propose the new poles, and they're going to have a much higher and a lot more uh, uh, um, reinforced within uh, the ground as well. But they'll talk a little bit more about that in the meeting. I have, uh, of course, Northwest Western Energy will be paying for this, but the city may see this some indirect costs over the time, you know, with up charges for power and, you know, raising rates. Um, the biggest thing there will be an easement swap between the city-owned um, properties and Northwestern's uh, right-of-way power lines. I mean, of course, as you saw on the map, uh, there is a dirt road and will not cause damage to traffic roadways since there is already a man-made road which will give uh, Northwestern Energy access to um, the new uh, where the new poles will be. Um, Joe Wolf from Northwestern Energy talks about North Northwest's uh, sort solution um, and looking forward in the future. Uh, two years ago, uh, I designed and we and, and we moved uh, both the structures on the north and south side because they were they were very close to the riverbank, and those structures were were uh, relocated 70 plus feet to the edge of the river. And in this, you know, this year they, they went over. So in looking at that existing route, to try to move those structures farther just, just wasn't, it, it, to me it wasn't an option. It would maybe buy us a year, two years, whatever, uh, whenever we see the next flood. So um, that's why we, we went down the, the road of, hey, we need to relocate this and find a better location for it. All right, so uh, Joe also has a video of some of the flooding that has occurred and some of the damage to the poles that have uh, happened in the past. Um, when this thing rolls, you'll, you'll be able to see how far the river actually shifted. And it, it was considerable. And so that's what kind of drove us to say, you know, we need to find a a better location uh, for this power line. I'll let it, I'll let it roll to the south side. 
The south side was a real similar structure. It was made up of three poles with, with, with a lot of down guys associated with it. And due to that river shift, um, two out of the three, uh, you can see, were, were basically scoured out. Um, the river had real turbulent flow. Uh, those poles were in the ground uh, eight and a half feet, and, and we saw that much scour. So um, that's what really drove us to look at, at, at what can we do, what can we do different. We've got to put this line in a location that, that will not put it out of service. All right, so that is kind of what you uh, what would happen with uh, the flood last year um, of this particular power line. Um, we have one last quote for you guys in this meeting. Um, um, Orchard Homes, of course, last year was the latest in flooding North Energy, has issued when Tower Street flooded a few years back. The areas where the former line are being put out of commission will be restored to its natural habitat along with new power lines moving to a more uh, suitable area for um, site visits and more. Morton Valiant uh, Conservation Lands Managers for the City of Missoula talks about height and tree line in terms of how high these poles are be, how high these poles are going to be, and how deep they're going to be into the earth. You know, from this pole to that pole where it's just a big span across the river um, with understory species that will never get taller than, you know, 30 feet. And so they'll still be 30 plus feet below uh, the actual line. And, and so that's something that w it was just not an option with this old line on these old poles that was much lower, um, that was pretty much uh, you know, nowhere close to the top of the canopy. It was growing within the canopy. And so historically, uh, Northwestern Energy has been going in there at least a couple times a year to remove trees, to do more pruning. Um, like Joe mentioned, these poles have been replaced twice now in the last two years. And so I also anticipate a lot less access uh, to the parkland with this new route. So long-term maintenance and the impacts on the public and the impacts on the land will also be reduced by upgrading the structure and choosing a new route. Well, the city plans to not look a gift horse in the mouse, in, in the mouse, in the mouth, um, and approve uh, this. But of course, there wasn't a, a formal quorum during this committee meeting um, during Parks and Conservation. But the um, November hearing is slated for Sometime in November, I'll let you guys know a little bit more about this as well, but this seems like it's pretty much uh, straightforward. There are already public uh, trails, and Northwestern will be able to help expand recreation for all in those areas. Most community members like the proposed easement, and we'll have a public hearing in November sometime. And you can watch this meeting by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's so nice that I do a whole segment on it. That's how nice the website is. <laughs> But of course, I want to throw it over to another art clip for you guys because these are the last chances you guys will check out some of these art clips uh, happening at, at the Gallery of the Visual Arts and of course the Clay Studio of Missoula, which you already saw. But here is the Gallery of the Visual Arts and I'll have the Missoula Art Museum a little bit later on in the show. But when I come back, I'm going to talk about some of the movies that are coming out this weekend as well. But of course, there hasn't... Well, I keep on saying but of course. But of course, here's, here's this. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Hey, you guys remember Ger Gerald? Bu well, I can't even remember how to pronounce his name, but this guy, Gerald, bu Gerald, uh, Ger Gerald Butler. Yeah, he's from 300, but he hasn't done really anything to a significant since then. It's time for pre-critic from those movies you've never heard of. Comes yet another Gerald, Gerald Butler movie about a guy. Wow, I'm just terrible um, <laughs> about a guy who. Hunts killers. Hunter killers is, is here to show you that Russians aren't that bad. Or are they? It's up to uh, Mr. Butler to save the Russian president from a rogue Russian general before Russia can do it themselves because the U.S. has to police the world. America. And speaking of America, this has nothing to do with America. It's even more British, James Bond. Well, get a little more or less or a little less more America in this third or fourth adaptation of comedy ge genius Rowan Atkinson. Of course, here in America, we know them. You know him as Mr. Bean, uh, which is kind of like the UK's Bill Murray. Anyways, he's a spy on a mission, and with a lot of help from his agency, he will stop at nothing, uh, stop the thing from blowing up the landmark or killing the queen or something. Of course, I've actually seen the first John English movie, and the queen abdicates her throne for uh, her corgi, who gets threatened. All right, moving on. <laughs> this next movie is called Indivisible. Uh, this movie is about a soldier who comes home, of course, familiar, um, changed, mm -hmm, um, and it will also affect his relationship with his wife. No, yes, of course. Um, but what this movie does in one afternoon doesn't really uh, reflect the damages on on a person's when they have to fight when they, ha when they are in their uh, fight or flight mechanism all the time. There's no quick fix to problems. Best movie about problem solving is uh, The Babadook. Of course, I highly suggest seeing that movie because sometimes horrors in life stay with you and you learn to live with them. But of course, this movie, um, uh, you know, but of course, you know, it's not the ends, but it's the means that matter the most because sometimes there is no ends. Some, some people are dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. M uh, but this movie will make money and uh, cover the costs and pay a small percentage to VA to make them feel better about themselves. So I don't know. So this is what you can expect from one of those patriotic type movies that are coming out this weekend as well. Uh, yeah, so those are some of your pre-critic videos as well. I have another uh, wonderful video for you guys from the flagship program. It is a reality show, um, but not really. I guess reality show is kind of a uh, oxymoron if you really think about it. So here is Flagship Friday, and when I come back, it's time for events. Oh, the peril I know his eyes. Just jumped out and scared us. Like, it's not nice. Like, who does she think I am? Who, does she even know my family? Hi, what's up? Um, I guess like nothing much. So, hello. <clears throat> uh, some people don't have this, you know. Um, but anyways. So my name is Mari. I'm like the best one here, just letting you know. I don't like any of them. They all know who the queen is here. They don't deserve to be here, obviously. It's so easy to eavesdrop on them. Like, I'm just sitting right behind the tree, and the girl struggles so hard just to say, <laughs> I'm going through so many emotions. <laughs> I'm gonna tell them, like, this girl thinks that she has to be scared of us. <laughs> it will be fine. It's gonna be fine. Like, out with it, girl. So, you guys wanna, like, go for a walk or something? And she asked us to go on a walk. Like, who does that anymore? A walk? Does she think I walk? Go for a walk, go for a walk, go for a walk. Oh my goodness. Walking? Are you sure you wanna go on a walk? People don't go on walks, especially when they don't know each other. I think I just made like the biggest mistake of my life. I don't even know what to do right now. I guess. Oh my goodness! We're going on the walk! I'm so happy right now! I'm so happy. I guess I could go. 
go. I mean, it's more exercise. I think. I mean, I guess it wasn't that bad. We went on a walk, and then this random girl out of nowhere was. Hi! So everything was perfectly fine. And then, you know what happens? That little Miss What's Her Face is just like comes out to scare us. And then I scream in front of like the whole world. So there you go, people. You saw me scream. You scared us. Do you know who I am? Yeah, I do. I'm the producer of the reality TV show that you're about to, you know, start on and everything. So how about we go for that walk and bond bit? That hat is like so last year. I don't know why she thought that she had the authority to come up and scare us. Like, I know she said she's the producer, but come on, that's just ridiculous. We know Halloween's coming up, but come on now, that's just ridiculous. I decided to go, so before this walk, I run, like I run from behind the tree over behind this wall, and then they're walking, and then I had to save the show, like always, because it was gonna be so boring just to watch these girls walk, walk, walk. So, I saved the show, like I usually always do with my shows and movies, and all producers do with all of their shows and movies. Scare me once, shame. Scare me twice, <laughs> forget about knowing me. So how about we go for that walk and bond bit? Yeah. I, I guess she can come. Fine. She came on the walk, and then you know what she did? She just blew it up, and she told me stuff I couldn't do. She told me she was the producer, more than like, get her fired, I guess. That doesn't even rhyme, but I don't care anymore. Just get her out of here. I mean, I guess she's on the reality show, and I didn't think that was what they did here, because I watch reality shows, like, all the time, and Producers are never on the show, but I guess I was wrong. But nothing was going that bad until all of a sudden. <laughs> there was a fork in the road. They stopped. They stopped because there were two sidewalk lanes. Whoa! Like, they're just like, oh my god, gross. Like, excuse me. There were too many ways to go. There was like left, right, middle, grass, and who wants to walk on the grass? And then there was like the right, right, and there was a left, left, and there was a right, left, and the backwards, and who wants to go backwards either? Little Miss Amara decided that we should go right. I think we should go to the right. So I had no idea which way to go, so I just agreed, I guess. Oh my gosh, we should go right. But no, like Beyonce said, I think we should go to the left. But no, no one listens to me. So I guess we'll just go to the right. I guess we'll go to the right. And they, they followed her. Like, I'm not making her the producer or anything, but they either like her or don't like her. And from what I've seen, their facial expressions, they don't like her. We got some drama up in here. And that's exactly what I like. Like, all things considering, if we went to the left, we actually would have gone to the parking lot and, like, died. And, ew, that's just a huge mess to clean up. So, I think that going to the right was actually a good idea. Listen to me. I'm so happy right now. I guess today wasn't too bad. I mean, two scares and a nasty leaf pile. Eh, that wasn't that bad. I mean, I was with Jessica. I mean, the day was okay. It could have been better, but whatever. Things can't always go your way, apparently. So my day was really just texting each one of those ladies to come and meet me there. They knew they were supposed to, just they didn't expect this world is gonna kill them because if, if they're scared of leaves. 
Seriously, one of them got scared because they saw a leaf. A leaf? This world is gonna kill them, and it's hilarious because it's perfect for my reality TV show! So, yes, I'm happy and sad because these girls are gonna kill me. <laughs> it will be fine! It's gonna be fine! Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about events and not talk about that ever again. Um, kicking off your events for this morning is the e-waste recycling at Missoula Fairgrounds. Hey, you gotta recycle some of the old stuff. So Oreos uh, Refining and 2018 Aero Expo and Annual Meeting Seeds of Sustainability in the Garden City is hosting a free e-waste e-waste event is happening 8 a.m. to noon today and also Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon. Um, they are only accepting four items computer towers, laptops, cell phones, and tablets. This e-waste event is free and open to the public. Uh, Newham Art Department hosts artists uh, Ronaldo Gil at the University of Montana starting at 9 a.m. They did a thing on Thursday. I talked a little bit about this, but they're going to be installing some student paces in the Fine Arts Building on the third floor. Uh, he's, a he's an artist currently working at Eastern Washington University. Mismo Misa, uh, Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena, and Rouge Acker Sports Center are all doing indoor activities. Hey, it's raining outside. You want to keep your kids dry, but you still want them to be active? Check out those places. Tiny Tales and Storytime is a great w place for your kids to expand their mind and learn new uh, nine new words a day. Um, this is from age birth to uh, five years of age, of course, because um, they go to school by the time they're six. Um, and that starts at 10.30 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. Spectrum. Um, speaking of the library, Spectrum is continuing their partnership with the Big Read event this week, um, A Wizard of Earthsea. And from 11 a.m. at their uh, location at the 1812 Tool Avenue Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a virtual reality fisheye experience and come learn about the Clark Fork River. Yarns and watercolor are at the Missoula Public Library. Um, you can either do yarns where you can stitch and make your own clothes, or you can watercolor where you can expand your art with a lot of watercolor. But of course, they only have a limited number of positions to... Uh, Go to it, usually about 8 or 9. Um, Cribbage and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center starting at 12.30ish uh, during lunchtime at the Missoula Senior Center, the best dance floor in Missoula. Uh, Endeavor is doing stuff too. Endeavor is located at their 1905 Sussex Avenue. Um, you can check out Legos, board games, and alternative learning environments from Endeavor starting at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Speaking of this afternoon, 3.30 to 5, YMCA is hosting a family fun time at the YMCA. Um, enjoy some of their indoor activities, which in includes pools, track, um, basketball, rock climbing walls, workout equipment, and all sorts of fun activities for the kids, all indoors while you're avoiding all this rain, unless you like the rain. Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat from 6 to 9 p.m. I'm kind of rushing through some of these earlier events because there's a lot of events on Saturday and nightly events happening on Friday and Saturday in conjunction with all these Halloween stuff. Um, Masquerade Ball, unmasking brain injury at the Heritage Hall at the Fort Missoula. Um, Join for an enchanted evening at the Historic Heritage Hall at Fort Missoula for their unmasking brain injury in Missoula Masquerade Ball. Bring your mask and join uh, re revelers for a party of the year featuring an evening full of entertainment and an exceptional silent auction. Every guest will enjoy d uh, delectable hors d'oeuvres, drinks, dancing, and a uh, Clydesdale drawn carriage rides. Um, Missoula Haunted House, it's the last weekend, but they're going to go on until th the 30th and the 31st, which is Tuesday and Wednesday of next week from 7 to 11 p.m. All events of the Missoula Haunted House. It's Kitty Corner of Russell and South Street in the conjunction, um, in, in the Malfunction Junction intersection between Brooks um, South and Russell. And you can check it all out. It's usually about $15, and maybe there's some deals for kids and um, for $10. And kid hours are from 2 to 4 p.m. on Saturday and Wednesday, the day of Halloween. Um, MCT Sister Act is happening uh, 7.30 uh, most nights, uh, Wednesday through Sunday, 7.30 p.m. with matinees on the weekends at 2 p.m. Um, Sister Act stars uh, Siri, uh, Sister Mary, uh, uh, Mary, 
Sister Mary. Oh, God, I, I'm just, oh, man, I haven't seen that movie ever. But remember the Whoopi Goldberg uh, Nun movie? Well, they made a musical about it. Of course, the original movie had music elements in there where she taught uh, the nuns how to sing and work together as a group. And this one's more musically inclined with dancing and musical and singing. So that's going to be happening at MCT for the next two weeks um, at MCT's Center for Performing Arts. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, uh, the Rocky Horror Live show, sorry, they're doing an early showing at the Walmart tonight at 8 p.m. and an evening showing at 11.45 p.m. with another show on Saturday, and I believe they're going to have another show on Halloween, but I don't know. Bust out your uh, fishnets, Missoula, because Rocky Horror Show Live is back for its seventh fabulous year. Yet again, the Mon Montana Actors Theater sla uh, slaughters your Halloween weekend with the rock live music, bright lights, skimpy costumes, and more gender-bending fun than you can shake a stick at. And that kind of wraps up your uh, Friday night events. There's a bunch of other Friday night events as well. If you guys are planning on going out and about on Friday, uh, they're going to do, um, let's see, hold on a second. <coughs> <coughs> All right, let me just find it. Okay, so here are some <laughs> late night events. I'm going to MissoulaEvents.net. I, I usually don't like to write down a lot of the late night events because they're pretty much straightforward DJ music and all that stuff. So Tom Catmull will be playing at the Union Club tonight. Um, Top Hat Lounge will be doing Off Into the Woods album release party. It's going to be uh, rock, funk music. Uh, they're going to have UM Jazz, Duke Ellington tribute concert at the University of Montana tonight as well. Um, if you guys are interested in learning about art and more, you can go to the Missoula um, muse uh, Museum Oh wait, Missoula Art Museum at uh, just down the street off Patty Street. You can't miss it. It's a beautiful building just across from uh, the Missoula Post Office. And without further ado, here is an art clip featuring uh, one of their installations. And when I come back, I'm going to wrap up with your weekend events right after this. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events happening on Saturday. It is the last farmer's market and rattle and roll at the farmer's market. You can get this, the visit the last day of the market. Rattle and roll will be downtown during farmer's market hours. They are parked near Broadway and Higgins between Clark Fork and the people's market. Sharp shop high quality uh, gently used baby and children's items and learn more about community resources and that's going to be uh, help kick it off the farmers market from 8 to 1 p.m. Uh, they have the farmers market by the red X's just up the street on Higgins they have the people's market uh, just in front of Thomas Marbar off of Pine Street and then further down underneath the Higgins bridge itself is the Clark Fork River Market and it'll be the last day of it usually they really start winding down after homecoming parade um, but you can always check out some the last uh, stronghold uh, remnants of the farmer's market as it gets rainier and rainier tomorrow. So it's a rainy day tomorrow, but you guys can still check it out. Um, some of those hardcore people as well, and you can join some of the hardcore people as well for those for a rainy uh, farmer's market. Alternative Energy Resource Organization. So of course the expo is continuing on from today till tomorrow um, for e-cycling, but of course this one is more about uh, to empower communities to nurture and promote more sustainable Montana. Of course they've been around since 1974. Uh, Aero, um, A-E-R-O, 
They have worked to ensure all Montanans have access to clean energy, sustainable agriculture, and healthy food. You guys got drugs? I'm particularly interested in learning about, uh, telling you guys about the prescription drug take back happening at 10 a.m. Southgate Mall. Did you know that medication are the leading cause of child poisoning in the U.S., save kids worldwide, and one in four teens in the U.S. have misused a prescription drug in their lifetime? So anyways, you can help prevent prescription drug misuse and poisonings by safeguarding your home and property disposing of your unused and expired medication at the Southgate Mall from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for prescription drug take back. Honoring the Dead Monotypes Workshop with Bev Glukert. For $30, you can honor the Dead Monotypes Workshop with Bev Glukert at uh, Missouri Art Museum. And that happens from 11 to 1.30 p.m. Saturday. MGAT Saturday drop-ins. Every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. And Saturday would be the perfect day. It's going to be all rainy outside. You want your kid to be active and indoors and create. Um, MCAT does Saturday animation drop-ins every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. We do mixed media. We do stop animation. We do Lego stop animation. All sorts of fun things happening this weekend as well. Grizz football. Hey, you want to drop your kids off and you want to hang out, watch the football game? Starting at 2 p.m., they kick off. The Grizzlies take on UC Davis. Starting at 5 p.m., yes, 5 p.m., all the late-night festivities of Halloween, which uh, accumulate with Disco Bloodbath 8, the eighth year of Disco Bloodbath. Uh, last couple of years, they've done it in giant warehouses where they have one big grave, but of course, it's been too much of a liability, so they ended up just doing it downtown at multiple venues. Venues include Monk's Bar, VFW, Downtown Dance Collective, Zach, American Legion, Ghetto Gypsy Shuttle, and The Loft. But of course, to go to Loft, you have the VIP tickets, and the Zach has an 18 plus um, for the Disco Bloodbath of some of the college kids who are just too young to go out and about this weekend as well. Uh, 7 p.m. West Auxiliary Gym. You can support the Grizz Volleyball Team uh, take on Northern Colorado. Sister Act, Rocky Horror, and Mozilla Haunted House all kicking off at 7 p.m. Saturday night as well. And going into Sunday, I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, an organization that came through here as well. Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Montana is doing Bull for Kids' Sake at Missoula Westside Lane starting at 1 p.m. Sunday. And they're going to do another one on Saturday, November 3rd from 7 to 9 p.m. at Westside Lanes to help raise money for Bull for Kids' Sake. They want to recruit four members to join your team. The team will have uh, until end of October to raise funds for their organization. Um, funds raise su uh, success at the event with free bowling, beverages, and pizza. Prizes will be awarded. Big Read, they're ending their Big Read event at the Music Public Library on Sunday at 4 p.m., the final event of the 2018 Big Read. They'll celebrate the Wizards Academy graduation with students from the Academy telling their tales and reading their poems. Final event held at the Conflux Building, Conflux Brewing Company, which is the new brewing company right next to Union Hall at 200 East Main Street. And this happens from 4 to 7 p.m. Big Read event all ends on Sunday. So those are some of your events. You can find out more information about those and events as well by going to MissoulaEvents.net. But if you're interested in learning more about MCAT, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is a great place to learn everything you need to know about uh, television, broadcast, and media. It's a good uh, step into television and media. And of course, if you're interested in becoming a YouTuber, it's a good way just to kind of give you uh, hone your skills and get a little better about being on camera. Um, I just want to know that we do local government. Uh, uh, we also have posted the future home of MCAT, which is in the new public library, which is slated to open June 2020. Um, of course, I want to tell you, uh, tell you guys about winter days starting in November. Um, if you have a kid between the ages of 9 and 13, and um, December 26th and through the 28th, uh, there's really not much going on. Kids get the days off, and you are probably have to get right back to work the day after Christmas, and you want your kids to do something. So we have uh, MCAT, Sar uh, I mean, Sar uh, basically it's a Saturday drop-in, but it's during the winter days, and we did it last year, and we had some good success. If you click on the link on our webpage, MCAT.org, it'll bring you to uh, last year's uh, Winter Days camp. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a fun day. Y kids get to hang out, work on some um, short films, learn about short films, learn to YouTube, learn uh, the honest way of protecting themselves in a future world that is uh, no secrets. Um, so anyways... Let's, uh, let's see, what else is there? Ah, I do want to talk about my website. If you want to learn more, more information about my show and other uh, 
video content that I show on my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write out twice. You could subscribe to me on YouTube. You can like me on Facebook, and you can follow me on Twitter. Three different things basically meaning the same exact thing. All you got to do is find me on the Google, Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me. It's great. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful, 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 wonderful uh, Friday night. Uh, my boys are going to be, uh, 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 and myself, will be in the rain tonight, hopefully being able to get a good uh, sports game for you guys. Um, it's going to be the last football game of the season. Um, the tournament starts next week, um, but of course uh, it's going to be, ah, no, it's not going to be Sentinel. It's going to be Big Sky. Is going to be taken on Butte America, um, Butte High School, uh, the Butte Bulldogs, the Big Sky Eagles, and it starts at 7 p.m. MCBS Stadium. If it's raining outside, uh, we're going to be doing it for MCAT on our Facebook on our Facebook page. So you have to uh, like us on Facebook to be notified of us live streaming. So that's some of the things that are happening at MCAT. So I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. I'll be back next Wednesday on Halloween. I got um, um, Missoula Aging Services on next Wednesday. So we'll have them on and maybe I'll dress up. Who knows? See you later.